Okay, so we've got uh, some basic ideas behind strategic formation, and now we're going to talk about modeling how we measure efficiency and also how we can model people's decisions to form and delete links. And so in terms of modeling incentives and uh, you know just sort of uh, keeping track of these things, let me just first make a, a very simple point. Um, so let's think of a, of a world where we need consensus to form links. So two individuals have to agree to be friends and I can't form a friendship with somebody else if they don't agree to be friends uh, with me. Now one way people might think of doing, of modeling this would be as just modeling it as a game. And the simplest possible game you could imagine is everybody just announces who they want to be friends with and then if both people, if two people both announce each other, then we form a friendship between them. And if they don't both announce each other, then we don't form a friendship. Okay, well, Nash equilibrium would be a situation where uh, nobody wants to change their list of announcements given the set of announcements of other individuals. And so let, let's just talk through why that is a, doesn't really work so well as a model of, of network formation in these kinds of settings. And um, imagine that we're in a setting where there's just two individuals, and if they're separate, they get a value of zero, and if they're connected, they get a value of one. Okay, and now we have a game where they, be, they simultaneously announce whether they're willing to form the relationship. Um, well, both of these are Nash equilibria. Um, it, in this case, um, it's a, a situation where if, if I don't think the other person's going to, going to announce me, and it doesn't matter what I do, I can't get the friendship anyway, so I might as well not announce it. So there's an equilibrium where neither person announces the other because they can't unilaterally change things. There's also an equilibrium where both of them announce the friendship and then it forms. And so there's two Nash equilibria. Um, and in this case, uh, that's uh, somewhat uh, um, problematic as a, as a model here because this is the simplest possible model and it, it predicts anything could happen in terms of the, the link either forming or not forming and yet um, any reasonable uh, communication among these individuals should lead to this link forming. Now there, there are ways of, of dealing with this in terms of the game theory. We can put in stronger solution concepts and try and do things that way so instead of looking at Nash equilibrium we can uh, allow for, for slight errors by players and, and see what happens. Or, um, but th there are other examples that aren't quite as simple as this one which give other solution concepts trouble. So what we're going to do is instead of using off-the-shelf non-cooperative game theory, we're going to model incentives using a very simple concept which we'll call pairwise stability. Okay? So the idea here is, is, is simple. What we'll do is, is we'll look at a network and we'll say that it is stable, and in particular we'll say it's pairwise stable, if no, um, nobody who's involved in some particular relationship would gain by deleting that relationship, okay? So it, in, in a situation where it takes mutual consent to form a link, either person can get rid of a link. So if one person decides they no longer want to be friends with somebody else, they sever that relationship. So it take, it's, one person can delete a relationship and it takes two to form one. So what we, what we do here is we have a situation where um, no single agent is going to gain from deleting a link and no two agents both gain from adding a link with at least one strictly gaining. So we can worry about indifferences, but the idea is that um, if two people both gain weakly and somebody gains strictly, then a relationship should form. Beneficial relationships should be pursued when available, and ones that aren't beneficial should not be pursued and, and should be deleted. Okay. Very simple concept, and that already this uh, will we'll begin to, to put a lot of structure on networks. So in terms of notation, pairwise stability um, is, is defined as follows. So we'll say that uh, the network will say that G is pairwise stable, so this is pairwise stability of a network G. It's stable if the utility of I for any link that they're involved in is greater than or equal to the, what they would get from deleting the link. Okay, so if it was less, they should have deleted it. So for G to be stable, it should be that they get at least as much as they would get from deleting any of the links that they're in. Nobody gains from severing the link. And 
if somebody w w really wants a new link, if somebody wants a new link, then it should be that the other person didn't want it. Otherwise, it should be added. Okay, so for this, this to be stable and, and not to be subject to further changes, it should be that if somebody wants to add it, their partner doesn't want to add it. So if some link IJ is not in, in G, this, if it, IJ is not in G, then it should be that if one person wants it, the other person doesn't want it. So it could be that neither person wants it, but it can't be that they're both happy to have this link um, and it not to be in there. Okay? So this is a very weak concept. Why is it weak? Well, it's only looking at pairs of individuals. It's only looking at one link at a time. And it just makes sure that there's no single link that would be better deleted and no link that's not present that would be better to add. Okay? But often this already is a fairly powerful, so sort of a minimal set of requirements that we might think of in terms of stability. It'll often uh, begin to narrow things down. Now there's all kinds of other variations. So this, is, uh, this, this concept came out of the paper with Asher Walensky. Um, so the Jackson Linsky 96 paper, people have looked at a lot of other variations on these kinds of things. We'll talk about some of them, um, but the, you know, the, this, this will give us uh, some basics to work with. Okay, so, so now when we go back to that example we had before, um, both are Nash equilibria, but this is the only pairwise stable network, right? So both people would gain by adding this um, pairwise stability just as this is the only stable network. Okay. Um, so let's, let's take a look at this in, in action. So let's look at a, a slightly richer example, and we'll talk about where these numbers come from a little bit later. But let's suppose that we have a situation where everybody's symmetric. If, uh, if nobody's connected, they all get payoffs of zero, so we'll just normalize payoffs with no connections to zero. Let's suppose that if you form a relationship with one other person, you get a value of three each. So if two people form a dyad, they get a value of three. So if uh, both sets of people formed relationships, then we'd have, if we have four people and we have two relationships, then everybody gets a three. Um, if if uh, we add a, a link to this network where these two individuals now decide to form a link together, then their payoffs go up. So now they have two relationships each. They're, they get a marginal benefit, a little bit more. They get 3.25. But let's suppose these people are jealous they don't like their friends to have new friends. So this is different than the connections model. This is a situation where now uh, I'm, I'm losing time with my friend because now they're spending more time with somebody else. So they get a value of two. Um, now these people, if they connect to each other, they get more value, but then these people are losing value because now their friends are, are spending time with other individuals. So you can think of this, this will come out of a collaboration network where if people I'm collaborating with or collaborating with other people, then that means we spend less time together, I get less value. So this is one where we've got negative uh, impact of other people forming new relationships. And so you can go through and, and have different payoffs of here. And here, you know, when, when these people now form a relationship, their value goes from 2.5 up to 2.78. But these people are, go down from 2.5 to 2, so they, they're losing more time of the, and, and so forth. And then these people form a relationship, they go up from the 2 to 2.3, and so forth. Okay? So this is a very simple um, setting. And what we see in this setting, in terms of the value, um, the arrows represent moves from one network to another network, which would be um, improving, or it would sort of means that this, this network is not stable because... Um, the individuals here would gain by adding a link, and then this one's not stable, and this one's not stable, right? So each one of these is pointing to a new one, and we end up with the um, only pairwise stable network for this set of payoffs, given all the permutations of these things. Um, you're going to end up with uh, everyone connected and um, everyone getting 2.33, okay? So that's the pairwise stable network in this setting, okay? Now, the interesting thing is, well, they, they're, getting, they're worse off than they would have been had they stopped here. The difficulty is this is not stable in the sense of individual incentives. People would have incentives to move on from that. Okay. So let's talk about that a little bit in more detail. So let's talk about the efficiency and contrast that with the individual incentives. Okay, so pairwise stability handles individual incentives. Now let's talk about evaluating overall welfare. 
So one notion that comes out of economics uh, due to Wilfredo Pareto in the uh, um, late 19th century um, is known as Pareto efficiency. And what does Pareto efficiency uh, mean? It says that a network is Pareto efficient if there is not some other network for which everybody is at least as well off and somebody, some of the individuals are strictly better off, okay? So there's not something that one can do which is unambiguously better for everybody. Nobody suffers and some people are made better off. So if something's not Pareto efficient, then society really has better options, just unambiguously better options. If something is Pareto efficient, then it means that if somebody gains by, move, by some change, somebody else loses, okay? So Pareto efficiency is a weak notion of efficiency. There can be lots of Pareto efficient outcomes. Um, but it, uh, it, it does rule some things out. So it's going to rule out things which are just unambiguously bad and you can do better by. Okay? Now, when we look at um, a, a stronger notion, instead of just keeping track of, well, some people might be better off, or is, is everybody better off or not, sometimes we have choices to make this. Some people are going to be better off and some people are going to be worse off. Um, we could talk about just a, a stronger notion of efficiency which we'll refer to as efficiency, or we could refer to as strong efficiency, if G is a maximizer of the overall sum of, of payoffs, okay? So, um, you know, this would be Pareto if, if you allowed for people just to move utility back and forth. You could always make, you know, if you, if you make everybody, uh, if you make the sum better off, then, then you could make everybody better off by, by making appropriate transfers. But more generally, this is just going to be a notion which is known as utilitarianism. Which means that, that you care just about the total utility or some weighted, in this case, the equal weights on all the individuals of the utility in the society. Okay, so this is utilitarianism with equal weights on everybody. I just care about total utility and I, I, I actually don't care. Um, you know, some people might gain or lose, but if overall it's better, then I want to go with that, okay? So this is a stronger notion. It'll, it'll narrow things down a little bit more. So if we look back at, at the picture we looked at before, um, pairwise stability was moving us to this uh, complete network. If we look at the overall maximizer, the overall maximizer would be here. Um, so this is an efficient network and it's also Pareto efficient. Um, this one is Pareto efficient. There's no other network which makes everybody better off. This one uh, would, is, is better in terms of the overall sum, right? This one gives us a higher sum than this one does. But these people, some people go down and other people go up, okay? So this is the overall efficiency and it's Pareto efficient. This one is Pareto efficient but not overall efficient in terms of, of maximizing total sum of utilities. Um, you know, this one is not Pareto efficient or efficient. Uh, this is better for everybody. And, and you know, same, similar here, the, these are. So here already in this example, we see that what society would like to do in terms of picking something which maximizes over your, all utility or even something which is Pareto efficient, they can end up with things which are worse in the sense that everybody is worse off than what would happen if the society could impose a network. And part of it is due to the fact that individuals aren't accounting for the harm that they inflict on others when they make their decisions, right? So they're, they're selfishly um, maximizing their own payoffs and not accounting for what that does to other individuals in the society. Now, that's not unusual in, in a lot of settings. And when, once we start looking at individual incentives, um, they're going to be misaligned. And especially in network contexts where what individuals do uh, and what benefits they get depends on the full structure of the network and what other people are doing. It's not going to be uh, unusual that we're going to find some conflict between what is, uh, individuals are going to do and what society would like them to do. What's going to be interesting is, is trying to figure out when this happens and to what extent it happens and why it happens and whether interventions can help or not. Um, so there's going to be a whole series of questions. But one of the basic themes once we start looking at strategic network formation is there's payoffs involved and 
individuals are going to be forming the relationships that they find beneficial, but what's good for them is not necessarily good for the overall society because their actions have implications for other people that they're not necessarily taking into account when choosing those actions. Okay, so we'll look at this in a little more detail now. We'll come back and look, say, at the connections model and some other models to try and analyze what are the efficient networks, what are the pairwise stable networks, do we see conflict and so forth, and that'll be our ne next topic.